हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक सो वी हैव डन न्यूक्लेजिया टॉपिक्स जो ऑल बिफोर द न्यू इन्वेजन एंड मेटास्टिस सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिव्यू ऑल दोज टॉपिक्स यू कैन गो बैक टू द प्ले लिस्ट एंड व्यू ऑल दोज लेक्चर्स एंड ऑल्सो डू लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब सो बिफोर वी कंटिन्यू द इन्वेजन एंड मेटास्टिस टॉपिक फ्रॉम न्यूक्लेजिया सो इन्वेजन एंड मेटास्टिस इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक Invasion and metastasis is a major cause of cancer related morbidity and mortality. This is very important because even before finding out which malignancy it is, if it is a squamous cell carcinoma, if it is adenocarcinoma, we are trying to find out how widely it has spread, where all metastasis has gone because the prognosis, be it any malignancy, falls very rapidly if there is a metastasis. Then, then we see the local invasion of tumor cells. the local invasion of a tumor cell may damage the vital structures that is a prerequisite for distant spread so whenever there will be a metastasis it will always start with a invasion that will be spreading and reaching up to the blood vessels but it was seen that in the mice and even in human studies many cells that reach up to the blood vessels are not able to metastasize they enter the blood stream every day but they are it very few of those cells produces the malignancy at the distant site so why is this metastatic process so inefficient so we are seeing that these cells are reaching blood vessels but they are not able to form a tumor why is it so the reason for this is for a cancer cell that are emerging from a primary mass that enters the blood vessels and lymphatics producing a secondary growth at a distinct swap, uh, site it requires multiple steps that it is not only that it is successful in doing one thing it will be able to form a malignancy it needs multiple things to be done and it also needs different host cells and host factors not only the tumor cells can do it it requires host cells and host factors to be able to complete one single process of metastasis getting implanted at a for, further site and starting to you know, colonize there at each point in this sequence the breakaway cells must overcome the challenges of avoiding the immune system so if there is a macrophage that comes and phagocytizes it if there is a t cells that identifies it as foreign and it tries to kill it all these things it will have to try to avoid the immune defenses the second is adapting to the micro environment so if a tumor cell has been reaching to some site where it was not it the conditions the micro environment will not be similar to its the place where it has originated so it might die there so if it is acquiring or if some of its clone is having a quality that it can survive at that place only then this tumor will able to colonize at the distinct site then the third thing is complexity of this series events may explain why a metastatic gene has not been found so it says suppose there are some cells that are not able to metastasize and there are some cells of the similar tumor that are able to metastasize we could have carried out a study that if this is having some genes and the one that is not able to metastasize that is having some genes we can study those genes and we can find out okay if this gene was present it was able to metastasize but it is not so direct there are multiple genes that are involved in this and not a single gene that we can directly find out okay this is having this gene so it will metastasize there is no single single concept of that type then we come to what is a metastatic phenotype metastatic phenotype is actually a cell that has acquired all the qualities that is having all the genetic abrasion as well as some epigenetic transfer uh, alterations that it can finally lead to metastasis that will be called as the metastatic phenotype so some cells will have metastatic phenotype in a malignancy whereas some will not have then what is epigenetic alteration epigenetic alteration means its genes can be similar to the rest genes but it is having some alterations in post translational modifications so that the expression of gene is now altered this set of skills may be present in only rare cells so this says some cells are having this type of mutations that supports metastasis while the others don't have that kind of mutations so this rare cell will only be so not if single single cells is going it will never be able to metastasize but if there are group of cells are going some are require having some mutations that are required for metastasis and the others are also going that are having some other mutations that will also support the metastasis so this group of cells will be able to metastasize whereas if a single cell goes there 
it will not be able to survive so the later idea implies the successful metastasis may arise from the migration of cohesive group of cells so whenever there will be metastasis one thing there will be the invasion then it will reach the blood vessels then it will try to reach a site where it can implant and then it will try to survive there and grow that is known as the colonization then this is a diagram with very simple diagram we will be able to understand what is happening actually so these two cells the two tumor cells are attached together by help of two cells are attached together with the help of e catheterin so this attachment will first break so these attachments are breaking some cells are not having the breakage of these attachments these cells will not be able to metastasize so these are not the metastatic phenotype but some cells are having metastatic phenotype so this metastatic phenotype will be acquired by acquiring some mutations that are supportive of metastasis that are loss of e cathedrin then the second thing will be after the loss of e cathedrin it will try to migrate through the basement membrane so this the clonal expression has occurred the clonal expansion then there are some metastatic phenotype cells these are the metastatic subtype then there is adhesion to the an invasion of the basement membrane it's trying to invade the basement how is it able to base, uh, cross through the basement membrane by help of matrix metalloproteases by the help of collagenases because it is trying to degrade this basement membrane so it will degrade this basement membrane then there it comes the extracellular matrix this is the interstitial matrix this will try to cross this and reach up to the blood vessel this blood vessel is again having a basement membrane this basement membrane will again be breached by these cells then it will reach the blood vessels okay so this reaching the blood vessels by crossing its basement membrane is called the intravasation once it has reached the blood vessels it will be attacked by immune cells so if it is having some mutations that it is reducing the expression of antigens these cells are reducing the expression of antigens and it is trying to it can save themselves from immune cells as well as if these are in big groups of cells these are in cluster of cells and it is forming it is forming embolus that is surrounded by platelet that is having some uh, it is prevented from the destruction by the lymphoid cells and this interaction plus formation of embolus will protect it from the surrounding and then finally it will reach to a site where it can get implanted and it cannot get implanted anywhere in the body it's not that of malignancy has started from the lung it will spread out through whole body it doesn't spread out and reach my finger it doesn't spread out and reach my eye it reaches to a very specific site so what are the factors that are deciding that where it will get implanted there are multiple of them and we'll discuss them further so these cells then cross the basement membrane and then this basement membrane then further the similar steps will occur like it has rid, uh, the adhesion molecules have gone away then there is crossing the basement membrane then there is crossing through the interstitial matrix then it is reaching the basement membrane similar things will happen again here basement membrane will be crossed interstitial matrix will be crossed then it will reach the basement membrane and then it will implant single cell will implant multiple cells will implant but these cells will be able to survive or not will completely depend if they are having or acquiring those mutation they are able to survive in a site that is distant and not not having similar micro environment as the origin as the site of origin was having so once it has reached there and it is having all the mutation that it can rebuild the angiogenesis and then it will start to grow there at that place so invasion of a extracellular matrix the structural organization and function of normal cell is determined by interaction of the cells and the extracellular matrix so we know the cell cells are connected by e cathedrin and then there is a basement membrane so tissue compartment is separated from each other by two type of extracellular matrix so first extracellular matrix is this basement membrane then we saw the interstitial connective tissue that was under this okay then this both things interstitial tissue as well as the basement membrane both these things are made up of it is made up of collagen glycoprotein and proteoglycan so what we need to destroy them we need collagenases we need matrix metalloproteases okay 
then carcinoma cells must breach underlying basement membrane transverse the interstitial connective tissue gain access to the circulation so it is crossing the basement membrane crossing the interstitial tissue and then finally reaching the basement membrane of the blood vessel this process is exactly reversed when it will try to extravasate this is called intravasation then it will be extravasating when the blood vessels will be crossed again then it will again cross the interstitial matrix then it will again cross the basement and then finally we reaching to a site where it will form its metastasis then the first thing that we'll see according to the diagram depicted in the robins this invasion of extracellular matrix the first thing that is happening is the loss this this is the normal what is happening this is the ecadedrin normally binding two cells and here we can see that there is loss of ecadedrin and then what the next step will occur it is having this type of this metastatic phenotype tumor cells are having certain enzymes that are then are causing the that will cause the collagenase release that will cause the matrix metalloprotease release and all these will cause degradation of type 4 collagen that is present in the basement membrane and then also there is three type of things collagenase matrix metalloprotease plasminogen activators so first step is loosening of intracellular matrix second is the degradation of the extracellular matrix then the third is migration and invasion once it is has been degraded now the cell will try to move down into the intracellular matrix and why it why is it that it is not moving in some other direction why is it that only it is moving downwards into the intracellular matrix this reason is there are autocrine mobility factors these are guiding and then there is a fibronectin so it is having receptors for these cytokines and these cytokines are actually leading it to through the intercellular matrix towards the blood vessel. So the first step that was happening was the epithelial cell was glued together with the help of adhesion molecules. These adhesion molecules, one the most important one is e-cathedrin that is a transmembrane glycoprotein that holds the cells together and also cause relaying of the signals between these cells. Okay, so in several epithelial tumor cells, certain adenocarcinomas, the expression of ecadedrin is lost and there is any mutation, pathognomic mutation that can cause loss of ecadedrin. So when the adhesion is lost between these cells, they are more likely to metastasize. Then there is one very, very important thing that is required for any epithelial malignancy to undergo a metastasis. That is a epithelial mesenchymal transition. It has been hypothesized that in some situations, once we have read that e cathedrin is mutated, the other thing is e cathedrin is not mutated, but it is silenced. The silencing of e cathedrin leads to mesenchymal, epithelial mesenchymal transition. And it has been postulated that epithelial mesenchymal transition is integral to the metastasis of a carcinoma, particularly that of the breast and the prostate. Extra, this epithelial mesenchymal transition is controlled by transcription factors that are snail and twist. There is dam so what happens in this when this uh, transcription factor snails and twist start acting on this this is leading to up down regulation of the epithelial markers and up regulation of the mesenchymal markers these mesenchymal markers are then vimentin smooth muscle actin and what are the epithelial markers the epithelial marker is the e cathedrin that has been suppressed so these all will lead to a pro migratory phenotype so what is this pro migratory phenotype this is a very supportive of metastasizing <laughs> Then the second step will be the uh, all the properties of loss of adhesion has occurred. Now the second step is to degrade the collagen. So for the degradation of the basement membrane is the second step. The tumor cells may accomplish this by secreting proteolytic enzymes or by inducing the stromal cells to do so. So it's not that tumor cells are themselves doing everything. They're very smart. They are telling the stromal cells they, that you have to also secrete collagenase. So everybody is uh, together secreting these proteolytic enzymes. These proteolytic enzymes include matrix metalloprotease, cathapsin D, urokinase plasminogen activators. These are all over expressed in the tumor cells that are exhibiting the properties of tumor invasion. Then this is very important that matrix metalloprotease, it is very important. This is asked multiple times in your uh, neat PG MCQs. Then matrix metalloprotease cleaves the type 4 collagen found in epithelial and vascular basement membranes, also stimulates the release of VEGF and extracellular matrix sequestered pool and generates collagen and proteoglycan cleavage products with chemotactic, angiogenic and growth promoting effects. So it is not only the degrading 
degrading your vascular membrane but it is very important that it is also causing angiogenesis not only angiogenesis is causing chemotaxis it is causing the movement of the tumor cell towards a directed direction and also promoting its growth so how many functions it is doing it is causing cleavage it is causing chemotaxis it is causing angiogenesis it is causing promotion of growth and how it is causing angiogenesis it is causing angiogenesis by vega then the benign tumors of breast colon stomach have little mmp9 activity whereas their malignant count when there are malignant counterparts they start to over express them we can very easily understand if they were benign it was not causing invasion it was not causing destruction it had low mmp9 matrix metalloprotease 9 whereas if it is a malignant cell it is very clearly seen that a malignant tumor of a breast of colon of the stomach have over expression of matrix metalloprotease 9 because they have to now break down this matrix spread across, across develop angiogenesis have chemotaxis towards the blood vessel then it will also have to grow growth factors will be released and also it will cause the cleavage of the collagen the concentration of matrix metalloprotease inhibitors have also reduced in tumors so one thing is it is increasing second thing is the inhibitor of matrix metalloprotease is also increasing so overall all the factors are happening that can increase these collagenases then tumor cells demonstrate complex changes in the expression of integrins the normal epithelial cell integrins that bind the basement membrane laminin and collagen are strictly restricted to the basal aspect of the cell these receptors help to maintain the cells in resting and polarized state so there are integrins that are helping a normal epithelial cells to stay at a particular position bound to a basement membrane but now what has happened loss of adhesion in the normal cell leads to inducing what happens whenever there will be loss of these integrins these cells will undergo apoptosis but in the tumor cells what is happening even after the loss of adhesion this is not undergoing apoptosis but it is able to survive there is a term this is known as anoikis this anoikis means somebody who is without a home so these tumors are without a home but they are surviving in ideal situation whenever a cell is without a home he has to die okay so anoikis in part because of expression of other integrins that mitigate the loss of adhesion to extracellular matrix apparently by transmitting signals that promote cell survival so why this is not able to die because there are signals that are making it survive the matrix itself is modified in the way that promotes invasion so what we say the tumor cells are not only causing the invasion but also the matrix that is around are giving all supportive signals to the malignant cells so that it can invade and it can metastasize then the cleavage of basement membrane proteins that is collagen 4 laminin by matrix metalloprotease 2 and 9 generates a novel site on the receptors in the tumors that stimulate migration so as we have already seen that uh, it the matrix metalloprotease is not only causing the cleavage of collagen but it is also chemotactic what it is doing when it is breaking the collagen the breakage of collagen is creating it is creating novel sites that are acting these are bare sites that can bound to that acts as a receptor and it can so it can these are leading to binding to generating novel sites that are binding to receptors on the tumor cells these are the naked site and there are there are tumor cells that are having receptors so these will get bound to these sites so that will also further help in migration one thing it is breaking down the collagen second thing it is creating sites where the tumor cell can get bound then the locomotion that is the final step that once it has reached cleave the uh, collagen it has uh, the adhesion has stopped it has cleaved the collagen now it will try to go inside but how this is locomotion why it is moving downward this is the final step this is through the degradation of basement membrane and zones of matrix proteolysis the migration is now a multi step process this involves families of receptors and several signaling pathways that eventually impinge on actin cytoskeleton so whenever any cell moves that we are studying from very our 11 standard and 12 standard it is having a skeleton inside a cell so this endoskeleton so how this endoskeleton works the cells must attach to the matrix at the leading end so the cells are having a leading end and it should detach from the trailing end so one end is the 
trailing end one end is the leading end so it is getting attached at one end and getting detached detached at the trail end and attached at the leading end and then there is a contraction of the actin that is present inside to reach the movement forward so this will lead to this actin will contract and this will lead to movement in the forward direction now such movement seems to be stimulated and directed by several type of factors are involved in this the first thing that is involved is the tumor cells are secreting cytokines that are causing autocrine mobility so these tumors are secreting cytokines that are directing this tumor cell as to where it has to go the second thing is the cleavage products of the matrix that i have already told that the matrix metalloproteases are cleaving in such a way that it is acting uh, a site where this tumor cell can cell it can bind and it can act as a receptor then there are third thing that is stromal cell derived paracrine factors you already know autocrine are the tumor cell is secreting the actin on itself there is paracrine is the stromal cell the cells all around it are acting secreting hormones that are acting on the uh, this tumor cell now the stromal cell derives paracrine factors such as hepatocyte growth factor uh, hepatocyte growth factor scatter factor that binds to the receptor tyrosine kinase that is met met on tumor cell and stimulates its mobility a successful invader induces signals that modifies stromal cells in the way that supports the malignant behavior so a successful invader will only be there if there is signaling that modifies the nearby cells as well that it so that it can support if it if there is a person who is trying to do something and everybody everywhere is trying to repulse that that it will not be able to submit successfully doing that thing but if everybody is very supportive It, it is very easy for him to do anything in his life so similar is with the tumor cell if the stromal cells support he will be able to do so if a tumor cell is a type if the this tumor invader is a type that is able to modify its surrounding and make them supportive only then this will be able to exhibit this will be able to successfully cross this membrane and be able to show its malignant behavior and end metastasize for example under the influence of invading cancer cells so called cancer associated fibroblasts alters the expression of the gene so this tumor cells are leading to cancer associated fibroblast how it is leading to they were normal fibroblast and it has changed the behavior of these fibroblast how it is done by altering the expression of the gene so there is no mutation in them but their expression their epigenetics has been changed by this tumor cells so the so that they can work in favor of this tumor cell the tumors in, evolve over time and becomes dominated by the cancer cells that are most effectively adjusted to the ever changing tumor micro environment then there is vascular dissemination homing and colonization so now what has happened we have discussed all the step up to the time where it has reached the blood vessel now next step is it has to prevent its degradation inside the blood vessel reach a site where it can be supportive of growth then colonize there so first thing is once in the circulation tumor cells are vulnerable to destruction now it can be destroyed by any mechanism one it can be destroyed by the sheer stress that it is hitting down somewhere and another place second thing is not is it is not having a home it is anoikis so this will lead to apoptosis this can lead to apoptosis the third thing is there are immune defenses that are finding it it might find it foreign so it has to prevent itself from being degraded the viable circulating tumor cells are not rare in a patient with solid tumors such as carcinoma so we know that if if you try to find out all the people with malignancy is their blood you will find malignant cells in them but still they are not able to metastasize what are what then separates these few cells that give rise to metastasis from the large number of cells that fails and where will the metastasis occur in body what are what all factors are determining these will be studying further the circulating cells that establish metastasis are more likely to migrate in multicellular aggregates as we have already discussed if they are in groups these multiple cells are having multiple mutations and maybe single is not capable of metastasis but when they come all together they are having multiple mutations if one is not able to do another will help it so if they are in groups they are more likely to be successful to undergo a metastasis then clumping of tumor cells in blood 
promotes a homotypic interaction as well as heterotypic interactions between the tumor cells and the blood elements particularly the platelets which are believed to enhance the tumor survival so one tumor cell is supporting the survival of other cell whereas the other platelet cells are also supporting the survival of the tumor cell how it is happening the what is that what is a homotypic interaction then tumor tumor interaction is a homotypic interaction whereas the tumor and platelet interaction is a heterotypic interaction so majorly they are surrounding each other the platelet cells are surrounding at the periphery so it is preventing in a way the destruction by the wbcs so how it is preventing due to as a sin if there is a malignant cell surrounded by what the other malignant cell if there will be destruction of the malignant cell that are outside so the center ones will be prevented so this is a homotypic interaction that is preventing the degradation of the cells that are in center whereas there is a heterotypic interaction like whole tumor cells surrounded by further platelets so there will be this platelets will prevent any destruction of these cells by the wbcs then tumor cells may also express ionic substances such as polyphosphates and activate factor 12 resulting in fibrin deposition for the stabilization of the tumor emboli and enhance the ability of the cells to arrest in mass within the capillary bed so the tumor cells they are not only this is not enough it is also cells are also expressing ionic substances what these ionic substances are these are polyphosphates these polyphosphates are causing the activation of factor 12 this factor 12 what is this factor 12 this is a contact factor that leads to formation of fibrin deposition that stabilizes this emboli so the emboli type of thing was formed that platelet was coated but not this was not enough it is also requiring the fibrin so for this fibrin the tumor cells is secreting the ionic substance this is polyphosphate that is activating factor 12 and resulting in fibrin deposition and stabilizing this tumor emboli and enhancing the ability of cell to arrest in mass within the capillary bed so this is a proper emboli is formed now the group of tumor cells are more likely than any single cell to possess all the properties that is required for metastasis that we already discussed and these these include the stem cell properties so some tumor cells maybe everybody is very highly dividing but it also requires some cells that are stem cells because stem cells are the kind of cells that can replicate into any type of cells now if the micro environment doesn't suit the tumor cells and there are stem cells it will form new cells that are well suited for the for this new micro environment so presence of stem cell in a metastatic clump will be so much beneficial for a metastatic clone to go and metastasize it aside and then this will lead to relapse relentless growth plus plasticity so plasticity is that property that we have already discussed it can form new cells that are well suited to that uh, micro environment then there is homing so now we are in the blood vessels it is very safe due to interactions with the uh, for the homotypic and heterotopic interactions it has formed a emboli it is also activated factor 12 it is also formed fibrin and it is very much forming a clump uh, emboli now it has to home somewhere but how to decide where to home where to home room this can be decided on the basis of first thing that is drainage so if a, if we can see that there are some sites that are draining to particular sites like suppose there is a colon malignancy and the site where it is draining through the portal it is draining to the liver so it is very likely to get metastasized to the liver whereas there can be others that are draining through ivcs and they are very likely to metastasize to the lungs so it is very important what drainage it is receiving then the second thing is trophism trophism of a particular type of tumor cells to a specific site so this is very much understandable the wherever there is draining it can be metastasized but there are lot of exceptions to this that it can be explained with the help of trophism and then there is escape from the tumor dormancy so what are what this trophism means and what is the tumor dormancy we are discussing further so first we come to the drainage so this is very simple anatomy like colon cancers are draining into the liver due to its portal drainage is in the liver but the exceptions to this rule are the prostate and breast are draining to bones so where is the breast drainage to the bones it doesn't drain to the bones so how its mets is leaching there then there is bronchogenic carcinomas that are involving the adrenals and brain so what is the correlation between bronchogenic carcinoma with the adrenals with the brain then the neuroblastoma it spreads to the liver and bones so to understand this 
there is something called as trophism so the tumor cells may express adhesion molecules or ligands are found preferentially on the endothelial cells of a target ligand so what happened normally like cd44 this cd44 was normally present in the t lymphocytes and now what happens the tumor cells due to mutation it has acquired this cd44 so this is leading to its migration to a selective site that is in the lymphoid tissue so the tumors that are metastasizing and leaching the lymph nodes are usually having a mutations that are leading to its antigen expression of cd44 this migration is accomplished by binding of cd44 to hyaluronate on the high endothelial venules the solid tumors commonly express cd44 that appears to enhance their spread to lymph nodes and other metastatic sites so it is very simple to understand some cancers express chemokine receptors which may guide tumor cells to tissue expressing chemokines so then there is a another thing that is the seed soil hypothesis what the seed soil hypothesis is first this was proposed by paget and the ability of tumor cells originating from a particular site to adapt to a foreign environment may be limited to certain type of tissue so he says that if a tumor is originating from liver it is having a particular capacity to only metastasize to a particular tumor type like xyz it will only metastasize to xyz it cannot reach to a so it is this is the hypothesis so why can we say see so there's in sometimes tumors in spite of having very rich blood supply in spite of having connections with spleen in spite of having good connections in spite of having good blood supply the tumors very rarely metastasize to spleen and to skeleton so this is a very good evidence that can suggest that high blood supply is not the only reason to metastasize at some place then there is extra vasation of tumor cells once arrested at a distant site extra vasated tumor cells involve involves transmigration between the endothelial cells followed by egression through the basement membrane so we al already know that there is transmigration to the endothelium and then it will be basement membrane then it will cross the interstitial matrix and then it will reach to a particular site where it has to implant this mechanism will be dependent on one thing it will be dependent on the endothelial fenestration so liver is having very fenestrated uh, endothelium some places might not have a fenestrated when will very tightly packed so it can not cross a very tightly endothelium cross uh, or very difficult it will be very difficult for these tumor cells to cross a endothelium that is not having very much fenestrations the extra vasations require the action of endothelial molecules that will be integrin laminin receptors then it will require proteolytic enzymes chemokines which may be derived from tumor cells or from innate immune cells such as it so the monocyte and neutrophils have also started to uh, help them then there finally will be the step that is that will also explain the term tumor dormancy that is still metastatic cells can fail to grow it has reached a particular site now also it can fail to grow so the whole process can also fail so how we can understand this this phenomena is known as a tumor dormancy is described in melanoma and in breast and prostate carcinoma so it is described in melanoma prostate and breast and prostate carcinoma this is still under study but it if we can understand grossly what it means the tumor cells secrete cytokines growth factors extracellular matrix molecules that acts on the resident stromal cells which in turn make the metastatic site habituable so as it is work as i already told you the tumor cells are very smart they don't only work themselves they make everybody else support them and make work for them so it is doing the similar things the tumor cells that are having the property to make the other cells work for for them this is this property is very important and this property is known as the tumor dormancy the example to this is it is seen the there are if the breast cancer cells are seen if it metastasizes to bone not all cancers breast cancer cells are releasing parathyroid hormone related proteins but once it metastasizes to bone there is this uh, parathyroid hormone related protein that stimulates the osteoblast to make rank ligand this will lead to the activation of osteoclast now this osteoclast will cause degradation of the bone matrix when it will cause degradation of the bone matrix the bone matrix was having some growth factors that is the insulin like growth factor and tgf beta now this insulin like growth factor and tgf beta will support the tumor cell how it will do it will bind to the receptors on the cancer cell and it will activate the signaling pathway and support its growth so it is so smart now tumor cell when it has reached the bone it is making the bone 
compatible with itself how it is doing so it is releasing parathyroid hormone related protein that is activating the osteoblast that is stimulating the rankle ligand on the which activates the osteoclast this osteoclast is further degrading the bone matrix that is releasing the in the uh, immune that is leading the growth factors that is further leading to activation that will bind to the cancer cell and activate the signaling pathway and so the tumor growth will promote at that distinct site so now we have understood in details how this process of invasion and metastasis is happening so thank you for being such an awesome audience and please do like and subscribe so that i can bring more new uh, lectures for you thank you so much